So Ado, basically, what you're asking is a, is a question that every company in their lifespan, every single startup goes through, right? Um, and let me show you what I mean. So, so l- let me kind of explain that. So basically, the question is, should I use my, should I build my own UI library or should I use existing library, right? So let's demystify that. When you start a company, when you start a digital company, a startup, right? You boilerplate, right? What you do is you boilerplate. You boilerplate because you have no money. You're two guys or three. You founded the company. You have angel investors, maybe your parents, your family. You're maybe investing your own money. So when you're at this stage zero of a company, you don't know, you, you, you have no customers, nothing. You have to build something, right? Here you wanna ship fast and fail fast, right? What, is, what does this have to do with a UI library, you might ask? Well, at this point in time, of course, you're not going to build your, your, your own UI library. That would be a, a suicide. You can already just shut down everything, right? So here you're going to go and say, let's find some UI library that can minimize the time we need to build our MVP, right? And then you do that, right? Then you do this. Every single company on this earth does this. If you don't, you're going to fail. But then at one point in time, your company, let's call this company a, a full company, you succeeded actually. You built a product, you raised series A, you're, you're hiring people, you're somewhere between 50 and 100 people, right? And this is amazing, right? But the problem is that your product still looks kind of like generic, right? Maybe you used Bootstrap or you use material UI, whatever. Now you want to build your own. Now you want to make this thing look like your own product, your own brand. You have your own new logo. You hire the designer. Designer has great ideas, right? And what do you do at this point? And I'm literally, I've went with, through this process with two or three different companies. What do you do? You take this material design that you used when you were in a stage zero of your startup and you try to make that as part, you, you try to make material design look like your own design. Let's, you know, make material UI look like something that has nothing to do with material design, right? I'm 100% sure that some of you have got, you know what I'm talking about. So now you have some library that inherently has its own rules. It looks exactly as it should. And you try overriding it. Some fucking div million levels inside. Color red important, right? You start doing this stuff, right? You start overriding. You start overriding. Let me just put this thing here. You start overriding these styles. Because, you know, material design no longer works the way you want it. You now want your product to look different. And then you realize, your developers realize one thing, man, this developer experience is terrible. Working with this UI library now makes absolutely no sense. It's, we need to do something. We need to get rid of material, UI, and or either build our own core UI library or find some that we can change change a lot easier to fit our own brand, right? So going back to your original question, should should I use an existing UI library or build my own? The answer lies in where you are as a company. What are you doing, right? Does it matter to you that your brand now looks amazing, that you have distinct branding, you know, and of course you need to get there as a product. So for most startups that are starting off and you still don't care much, you want to pick something, go with that for some time. And then at one point in time, you're going to get to this point here where that library no longer suffices. You just, it's just impossible to work with it because your developers have to fight against it. And then you either, again, build your own or you 
find some something like Tailwind or whatever and some maybe thing like some of these new things like DaisyJS and stuff and then you can override them easily. Of course in this stage zero as well if you can pick something that is that comes with uh, components and everything else built out for you that you can also change later in time easy that's also good but in most cases it's very difficult to do that right so that's my take yeah